Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Friday the 26th of November 2021. Today's Millwall news, we're going to start off with this story. It's Bart Biakowski. He's come out, he's come out as a vegan. Um, this is from londonnewsonline.co.uk. They've got a pretty uh, big interview with him today. I would imagine this is in their paper on Friday, South London Press's Friday edition, I don't know. Um, Millwall keeper Bart Biakowski on why going vegan has helped him stack up impressive uh, championship sequence. Bart Biakowski has clocked up 110 successive championship starts for Millwall and the experienced goalkeeper reckons going vegan has played a part in that run. The 34-year-old has played every minute for the Lions in the league since he replaced Frank Fielding in the 34th minute of the 2019-20 opener against Preston at the Den. Biakowski has won the last two Player of the Year awards, proving providing stability in a position that has been in a state of flux. Ben Amos, Jordan Archer and David Martin all had stints between the post and the campaign and failed to convince stem boss Neil Harris before Biakowski arrived on a free transfer from Ipswich Town, the Poland stopper needs just four more outings to hit the 300 game mark in the championship. Centre back Alex Pierce, 331, is the only member of the Mill squad to have featured more times at this level. The key is to staying healthy and fit, Biakarski told the South London Press about his unbroken run in the Lions side. But with experience, you also become more consistent, you know your game. But it is also about your diet, recovery and relationship with the goalkeeping coach. I talk to LT on a daily basis about what I need to do. Maybe I do something less than other keepers because I'm not getting any younger. I need to be clever with that as well. Sometimes less is more, if you know what I mean. It doesn't mean I'm not working hard. I've found a balance with LT that gets the best out of me. I've gone vegan in the last couple of years and it has helped a lot with my recovery. In terms of getting less inflammation in my body. I watched a program on it and that interested me and I just thought I'm going to try it for a couple of weeks and see if see if I see any difference. After the first week I felt awful. It was my body getting rid of the toxins in my system. I had massive headaches but after two weeks I felt great, better than I used to after games. Sleep is cru crucial as well. I try to get eight hours overnight. I've never had any sleep problems but it's a little bit harder, <clears throat> little bit harder after games especially if it is an away one. You're getting back at a crazy time and it can be difficult to relax. Bitkowski had conceded 19 goals in as many championship matches this season only in the top three and miserly Derby County have better defensive records. I get massive help from my teammates at Birkowski. There have been games where I've virtually had one save to make and then matches where I've had to make five or six. But overall we have been defensively solid for the last three years and it's something we work out on the training pitch. This is definitely our strength. Some, some sections of Mill support have wanted more expansive football. That inevitably gives the opposition more opportunities down the other end. We have to be strong defensively to be able to go and win the game, said Biaskowski, especially in this league. It's so tough. We proved we can be a really good side. We maybe should have more points than we had. Because it's not like we're not creating anything. Teams like Bournemouth, Fulham and West Brom have such talented players. Maybe we don't have the funds to get them type of players. But also, it could be tricky, difficult, tricky, difficult and tricky. Because I've been in a similar position at Ipswich when they got relegated from the Championship. We had a new manager and he tried to play offensive and good football for the fans. We tried to play football from the back. That didn't work, but we kept trying and we went down. So sometimes people don't realise what they want. To be able to play the, that football, you need to have everything. Facilities, a good pitch and good players. With good players comes money. So we're doing a fantastic job. The gaffer is doing a fanta fantastic job with us. To be in a position we are in the finish in the last two seasons, not far from the playoffs, is something that we can be proud of. We can look to try and be even better. It is a fantastic place and, uh, and a great manager. Sometimes it is the small details between winning, drawing and losing. So there you go, uh, interview of Bart Biakowski from the South London Press today. And I would say, yeah, so big thing coming out. So he's gone vegan. Yes, some animal products do cause inflammation if you, depending on what you eat. Um, but also with the vegan diet, you tend to have, if you actually eat vegetables and fruits, stuff like that, actual grains, if you actually eat natural products, 
then that's good but if you eat meat replacement products uh, if you ever pick to pick up one of them and look at the ingredients it's just chemicals and stuff you know it's not that healthy it's just it's just junk food like you could eat junk food and still be a vegan you can eat um packets of crisps and stuff they're vegan they're basically just fried potatoes but they're just oil oil on potatoes so it's how you do it um and there is there is a worry that the longer you do the vegan diet, if you're very, very strict of it, um, I don't know how strict he is, but if you are very, very strict of it, um, it can lead to certain nutrients becoming deficient in your body as your body uses them up. So I would say I hope he gets his blood work done and does it properly because he is a professional sportsman. So I'd imagine he, he would be doing that. Um, he should be doing that, but yeah, but um, yeah, there is a thing um in terms of diet and not eating meat and stuff. I mean, literally, if you look at every major religion in the world, they all have sort of things about food, about um a period of fasting, um. With if Catholic Church not not eating meat on a Friday, things like that. These dietary rules they they exist for a reason, and the reason is if you do eat too much meat, it's not good for you. And if you do fast for like, like um, so Muslims obviously do Ramadan. Um, uh, Catholics can do be do, be doing uh, fasting during Lent and stuff. If you do do that, it's beneficial for you. It is beneficial for you um it just resets your body um so it lets everything um set, settle down to the thing um to the baseline so the, that's a thing that exists and that's existed for thousands of years so there must be some value in it that and why that's being done um so yeah so being becoming a vegan there interesting 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 uh we will see so moving on now to lone watch so their war games on tuesday and wednesday i believe seven of the mills lone players were in action this midweek and mill football club have published it um, published details uh, this is from millsc.co.uk so let's have a look and see what they've got so Dan Moss and Isaac Loffey were the midweek winners of Sutton United and Yeovil Town were victorious in their respective league fixtures. Moss, who is impressing with the Glovers, was part of Yeovil side, who were 2-1 winners at Bromley in the Vanarama National League. While Loffey was involved in Sutton's second goal in a 2-0 Skybet League 2 success over Mansfield Town. Um, Alex Mitchell, meanwhile, played the 90 minutes in a 1-1 draw for Leighton Orient at Scunthorpe United, but there were defeats for Arthur Penny. For Welling United in the London Senior Cup at Dulwich Jamlet, they lost 3-1. And Junior Tenzia with the Dover Athletic being defeated 3-2 at home to Wildstone in the Vanarama National League. Ryan Sanford was absent uh, as Maidstone United won 3-2 at Ipswich United. So I believe before that he kept two clean sheets in a row. One a 0-0 draw and one, oh, I think it was a 1-0 win. So interesting, he missed that game. They conceded uh, two goals, but... Um, they ended up winning 3 2, so it would be interesting why he was absent as well. Is um, I have no idea why. Was I didn't check it, so I'm just reading this. I don't really, I didn't uh, check the backstory. I don't know if he was on the bench or if uh, if he was on the bench, I think they would have said he was an unused substitute, but maybe he was. I don't know. Uh, Moss and Tenzi are set to meet this weekend as Yeovil host Dover at Ewish Park. So Mill versus Millwall clashed this weekend. And here are the um, weekend's fixtures involving Mill's lone players. Uh, you can see them all there. Sutton United at home versus Isaac Loffey. Uh, anyone wants to go and see that. Uh, Mason United versus Billericay Town. Um, yeah, there they are. Oh, and uh, Welling United playing in the FA Trophy. Um, so, there are the games involving Mill Lone players this weekend. 
Moving on now to this story also involving lone players. So this is from newsatden.co.uk. Mill did to discuss players out on loan as boss praises youngsters fantastic first senior goal. Mill are set to decide on the futures of their players out on loan as a number of youngsters continue to make positive impacts at clubs lower down the league structure. Jaden Davis returned to the Lions this week after he scored his first senior goal in professional football. Attacker Davis signed for National League Kings in town on a month's deal. And in his last game, got the ball, got the ball on the left touchline and beat four defenders before lashing high into the net. It, that is a fantastic goal. If you can see that if you go to Bromley's F, Bromley FC's website, they do a thing called Bromley TV. Check out the game between Bromley and Kingsling and you'll see that there. Um, Isaac Loffey and Alex Mitchell are among a number of players excelling at their clubs as Mill's loan policy is really paying dividends. Danny McNamara paved the way last season when he returned from a temporary spell at St Johnson before his impressive form saw him recalled and put straight into Gary Routes' first team. Davis joined the Kings team struggling in the bottom of the table but has come away with that goal on his belt as well as senior competitive action. Well, it was asked about the loan players and Davis's immediate future. Uh, it was a fantastic goal. He was tight to the byline. It was really good feet and enduring his score from a tight angle, Rout said earlier this week. We try to watch all the lone players, all their clips, so we see their progress. It's been a tough spell, I'm sure, for Jaden. I haven't spoke yet with the 23 management to see how the loan has gone. We'll sit down and discuss those lone players and what is the best way forward. Sometimes there is an opportunity to get players a month of games when there aren't many under 23 games. That's the plan sometimes to get them football in the National League and then they can come back to the under-23s. We'll sit down and discuss the next plan for those players. Uh, yeah, we do. We actually have an uh, under-23 game on the 20th of December. Swansea City away. Um, the rest of the league don't have a game that late. And then the next game after is the 10th of January. So there is like a, a, a two-week break over the Christmas period. So I imagine that's where you get them out on loan and you can get them playing because it's quite busy uh, over that Christmas period for a lot of clubs. Um, so I imagine that is the thing as well. Not only that, but in terms of re-signing some of these players, now they've gone out on loan and they're playing well, but that doesn't really mean we'll, we'll re-sign them. Might have to let, let some of them go. Um and it's good for them if they do get on loan and play well because then it, it gives them a chance to put themselves out on the shop window and get clubs uh trying to offer them new contracts when their um uh, old contract is not renewed in the summer so i don't think we're going to be re-signing all of these players um so there you go not only are they, they're playing to improve their prospects uh, coming back to Millwall and playing well but they're, they're playing for themselves as well they're getting a name for themselves in that league and getting a chance to get a new contract at another club if Millwall let them go in the summer so moving on now more uh, loan player news uh, Arthur Penny extends loan at Welling United so he's got another month there uh, Arthur Penny has extended his loan at Welling United until the 23rd of December 2021. The defender, a regular for Mill under-23 side, has impressed at Parkview Road, scoring once and can now continue his development in Kent until Christmas. Find out how Penny has been getting on with the wings in millfc.co.uk's regular loan watch features. Indeed. So, another month loan there for him, which is good. Um, moving on now to the under 18s the under 18s so I told you about the FA Youth Cup draw we got a tough one Sheffield United away straight in at the third round being thrown into the deep end um, and the, the date has been set for the game to take place and it is Wednesday the 15th of December Wednesday the 15th of December so anyone any Mill fans up living up in Yorkshire I uh, want to get involved in this. Sheffield United uh, under 18s versus Mill under 18s. FA Youth Cup. Third round proper. 7 o'clock kickoff at Bramall Lane. There you go. Wednesday, the 15th of December. Um, it would be a tough game. It really would be a tough game. 
Um, so now let's get onto the preview of tomorrow's game, Whole City Away. Now I've just pulled this up. I'm, I'm absolutely shocked how bad this is. This is 11v11.com. This is the historical record of head to head games versus Millwall and Whole City. And I've done it by Whole City versus Millwall games. I've clicked on it and done it, make them come to the top. It's just a sea of red. It's an absolute bloodbath for Millwall travelling up there. First game, 1929, April, 4-0 loss. Then a 3-2 loss, 3-2 loss, 4-1 loss. Absolutely. We didn't, we didn't win up there until 1973, which is... 12, 13 games in. We went up to Hull 13 times over 50-odd years, and then we won our first game. The 13th time. February 1973, 1-2-0. That is insane. That is crazy. Absolutely crazy. And that was in a little run of decent form in the 1970s. Of Even then, so we got five games where we didn't lose, but only one of them was a win. The rest were draws. And then seven defeats in a row from 1978 to 1987. 5-0, 3-1, 3-0. We we go up, then we get spanked. It's um, not a good place to go if you're a Millwall fan. Now, recently it's been hit and miss. We've started to get some wins. We either win or we lose. Not, not too many draws. We got a draw in 1991. We didn't play them again until 2005. Um, so the big gap there between 1991 and 2005. Uh, two draws. 1-1-1-1. Played them in the FA Cup in 2009. Uh, lost 2-0. And then we won 1-0 2011. Two losses, and then uh, recently the last three outings up there, one two one, lost two one, one one nil. Does that mean it started to turn, or are we going to be? Um, was is this an anomaly? The recent wins, but this is insane that over the last. Where are we? We're here. So over the last. What would that be? One, two, three, four, five, six. The last six times we went up to to um Yeah, the last six times we've been to Hull, we won three of those games. And that was that's a three of five wins we've had. We've only won up there five times in all of these games. So so this one here. Uh, this one, 11th of July 2020, that was last year, going all the way back to 1929. So was that? That's just under 100 years, is it? Yeah, just under, so 90 odd years, 90 years, 91 years. 91 years of travelling up to Hull. We've only won five times. And three of those wins have been in the last six games. That is insane. That is insane. But So it does seem the tide has turned. Where we can go to hole and win. But we it's either we win or we lose. And, look, and there is some heavy defeats here. 5-0, 4-1. It's... It's not a happy place for Mill Mill fans to go and watch a football game. It really isn't. Uh, so what does that mean for to tomorrow's game? Dunno. But uh, let's have a look. Uh so let's let's have a look at match facts on the right hand side. There have been under two and a half goals scored in twelve of Mill's last fourteen games. So not a lot of goals in Mill's Mill games. There have been under two and a half goals scored in Hull's last six games. It's not a lot of goals in Hull's games. Millwall have drawn the last three matches in the championship. Hull have kept a clean sheet in the last three matches in the championship. So what are we looking at there? Nil-nil. Here are the last six outings to Hull. And as you can see, three wins for Hull, three wins for Millwall, no draws. 
Um, nine golds for them, six golds for us. Eight yellow cards, ten yellow cards. But massive, look, 4 1. And when we did win, it was by the odd goal 1 0, 1 0, 2 1. Uh, we only failed to score up there once, 2 0, we, we lost. And we kept two clean sheets, so we've, we've failed to score once, but stopped them from scoring in two games, which is good. Um, moving on to current situation, real world, current year. In the current year, we are 10th in the table, they are 19th. They've won their last three games. They needed to because they were hovering above the relegation zone. They still are, but it's pushed them up some way when you win games. We've drawn our last three games after doing very well and winning quite a few games, which helped us get up to 6th to or 7th in the table. Now we're back down to 10th, and the gap is opening up with the clubs in the playoff places. Um, that's what happens when you draw you, you get free get points over three games they've had nine points over their three games so let's have a look at the form table that should be there you go they're above us in the form table three wins three defeats five but only five goals scored three goals against they're not they're not scoring a lot of goals it's less than one goal a game um for us two wins three draws one defeat so we've lost less than them but <clears throat> six goals four five against so we've had a worse defense over the last six games than Hull. but the same points nine and nine here are the last six home games for Hull. the last six away games for Millwall. Now they've they've won their last three games, but only one of them was a home game. That was against Birmingham, who had a player sent off, which I believe was Ryan Woods, which I believe it was Ryan Woods. I heard he got sent off. I think it was trying to. Someone said, "Oh, it's because it, it um, stops him playing against us." So that would be interesting. Um, you can see they've kept a clean sheet against Middlesbrough, and and against Birmingham. They failed to score against uh, Coventry, and they lost. They lost to Coventry and Peterborough, and Sheffield United over the last six home games. For us, of course, we had the two-one win at Sheffield United when they had a player sent off. We lost at uh, Huddersfield, failed to score. Um, we beat Barnsley one 0 We drew one-one with Forest. Drew nil 0 with Swansea. Drew with Middlesbrough, which is a good result, um, historically 1-1. One, one. Um, here are the strengths and weaknesses of the team. As you can see, we've got more strengths than them. Uh, they've got a lot more weaknesses than us. Here's the styles. So they reckon Mill will dominate in the air, very likely. So does that mean uh, Matt Smith starting? I don't know. Now, Benekophobia is pretty good against Bournemouth. Can he do it over... Short rest. I would like to see a bit of rotation uh, in the starting eleven. Benek can start on the bench, come off the bench. Uh, I don't see why he couldn't do that. Um, but I would sort of like to see a bit of rotation with that short Wednesday to Saturday turnaround. So maybe Matt Smith can come on. I don't know. Um, so you've seen that. So what? What do they say? What's the prediction? So here's the possible lineups. They don't really know what they're talking about, so let's just skip over that. Okay, we've seen the match facts. Let's just get to the prediction. Keen Lewis Potter's goal was all that separated the sides on Wednesday night as Hull recorded a 1 0 away victory against the struggling Cardiff side. The Tigers are now three points clear of the relegation zone after winning three league games on a bounce. Mill recorded their 8th 1 1 draw of the season in midweek, this time coming against title contenders Bournemouth, thanks to a second half Benekophobia equaliser. Gary outside have drawn each of their last three league games, and they reckon it's going to be Hull 1, Mill Wall 1. Now here's the thing, so Hull have won their last three games, but they haven't scored a lot of goals. I think it's like... 
they're not scoring a lot of goals. They kept kept um, free clean sheets, so it doesn't suggest they they're attacking very much. They probably play like us or the way Garrett Rowett's got us playing. Try and sit back, keep it tight, maybe go on the counter. If they are doing that, can we do that as well? How's that going to work? Um, someone has to attack in order for the other team to counter attack. Um, so it suggests that we can't play the way that we normally play away from home. If they're not going to, maybe if they're not going to attack us too much, if they're just going to sit back and um, try and keep it tight, maybe try and boss it in midfield and then get some set pieces and stuff I don't know but can we play the normally way we normally play for away from home should we because it hasn't really been working especially in the first half we come out of games the hardest field game we had like four shots all, all game that's not good enough we need probably at least one shot every 10 minutes so four shots in the first half four shots in the second half at least eight shots over the, the length of the game get if we do have eight shots, we usually have one of them on target. So that means we're barely going to score one goal. So we probably need to, to attack more than that. We need to probably need 10 or 12 shots and probably get two or three on target to get more than one goal. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Um, I would, like I said, I would like to see some rotation in the side. Um, short turnaround. Uh, none of the players really stand out. Like you can switch some of the players out, and some of the players in, and they'll still still perform to the same same level. I don't know. Um, so there's the prediction from whoscored.com. So now let's get to David Pratton's prediction. So this is from SkySports.com. Now what does he predict? Now I've switched up this week. I've left him till last. Uh, where are we at? We're right down the bottom. Here we are. So he reckons it's going to be hole one, Millwall one. So he's going for one one as well. So that's interesting. So we are the draw draw specialist. We are the one one draw specialist. Um, a, a lot of our draws are one ones. We had one nil nil. Can we keep? If we can keep a clean sheet, we could win one nil. Like we've done uh, the last couple of times we've been there. Um, in twenty, like the last game and the one in 2011. 2-1-0 wins. So that is a possibility. Um, I would that I would be absolutely f fantastic result for us if we did get that 1-0 win. Um, now the weather's going to be fucking dog shit. That might be another thing. Playing a ball up in the air to Matt Smith probably might not work with the weather that's going on. It's really, um, or it might, might be the thing that we need to create the chaos. Putting balls up in the air, swirling balls around, causing chaos in the air. That might be a thing that might work towards our advantage. Because we might not be able to play it around on the floor. Uh, with if it's raining as well, a lot of rain going on, it might be one of those games. So, if it is one of those games, and it's if the weather is absolutely dog shit now, it's it's going to start raining now um, soon in South London. It's going to be raining overnight. I don't know about Hull uh, when it's going to rain. I I think it's going to rain overnight there as well. But will it still be raining come three o'clock tomorrow? I don't know. I am going to say that the game will be nil nil. I think it's going to be nil nil because I think the weather is going to be so poor, and I think we are probably going to be playing it up in the air to Matt Smith probably, um, or Benigafobi. That it's, the wind's going to blow it out a lot. This shorten the shorten the game time. I think we're going to stop them from doing anything because I don't think they can really do anything against us. And I think it's going to be a nil-nil draw. I think another draw, a nil-nil draw. That's what I predict. So there you go. That is it. We'll see what happens. I hope I'm wrong. I hope we get the one-nil win that we probably 
would be a good result for us, but uh, we'll see. Thank you for watching and goodbye.